in this video, we're going to use uh, Excel to determine the amount of a monthly lease payment and to establish a, a amortization schedule that we will use uh, for account matrix with a separate video uh, utilizing the amortization table and prepare the required journal entries. So let's see, we have a company here who has been shopping around for a product and they have been able to establish that the fair value of the asset that they uh, want to acquire is 125000 Since we know the market price, uh, we will use this for a type 1 fair value. And we can establish the fair value of the leased asset as 125000 in negotiating with the lessor, uh, we've determined that the lease will carry an interest rate of 12%. This will require uh, monthly payments, so there will be 12 payments per year. The lease is going to be in force for three years, and the lease requires that we make payments beginning on the first day of the release, which is going to be September 1st, 2012. So that will be an annuity due, and we're going to signify that with a one. If payments were made at the end of the month, that would be an ordinary annuity, and we would signify that with a zero. Since we have an annual interest rate of 12% and 12 payments per year, our periodic interest rate, which will be determined interest for the amortization period, will be 1%. Over the life of the lease, we will make 12 payments for, per year, for 3 years, or 36 payments altogether. Before we proceed uh, in determining the uh, payment amount, let's go over to applying the GAAP criteria to determine whether this is going to be an operating lease or a capital lease. And then if it's an operating lease, we will treat these payments as rent. If it is a capital lease, we're going to treat the transactions as if it was the purchase of this lease asset or with a note payout. So GAAP has four questions. The first says, does the agreement specify that ownership of the asset transfers to the lessee at the end of the lease? And in this case, the answer is no. Next, cap is, is there a bargain purchase option? The bargain purchase option is when at the end of the lease term, the lessee can purchase the leased asset at a price that is below the expected market rate. Here, there is no bargain purchase option. In this problem, we've determined that the asset has a useful life of four years. Of course, that's going to change with the type of asset. The gap criteria is, is the lease equal to or greater than 75% of the useful life? Or we're leasing this asset for three years out of a with a useful life of four. So we will be leasing it for exactly 75% of its useful life. Be careful here. And the gap says equal to or greater than 75%. So our answer here is yes. Since we have a yes, we do not need to proceed with the fourth criteria. This is going to be a capital lease. So let's see how much the lessor would lease this equipment for. We do this, we're going to go up to the formulas, we're going to go to financial, and we are looking for PMT. In our argument box, it's asking for the rate, that's, that's going to be a periodic rate, 1%. Number of payments we're going to make in the life of this lease is 36. We have established the present value of this equipment, present value and fair value in this case means the same thing, at 125000 
And finally, we think it's important to report in the pipe. Since we're going to be making a payment at the beginning of the period, we can indicate this is a type 1. And Excel is going to come back with a payment of $4,110.68. Or let's clean up the form of this. We want this to be a positive. So to do that, we could enter in a negative amount as the present value. The present value is going to turn itself D1 to make a minus. That will convert our payment amount to a positive amount. And if we don't want to deal with this because I think we can easily round the payment to uh, 4000 $111. So let's begin constructing our amortization table. We're going to have 36 payments. We're going to begin our table at time zero. Time zero. One, two. We can then quickly enter the rest by highlighting zero, one, two, three, grabbing a little box in the lower right hand corner and dragging them cursor down to these six places. The initial balance is going to be our fair value. So we'll reference our D1. Our first payment will be equal to the payment we calculated in cell D8. Since we're going to be using this for all of our payments, let's lock it in by hitting the F4 key at this point. And now we're going to enter. In the first payment, we're making it on day one. There is no interest. Interest is zero, which means all of the payment is going to principal. After the first payment, the balance will go from 125000 down by the amount of the payment. Our second payment will be made one month later on 10-1, 2012. It's going to do for the same amount. Since we use the lock-in feature, that will stay on the cell D8. Our interest will be calculated off of the balance after the first payment, multiplied by our periodic interest rate. Since we're going to be doing this calculation in real life, again, we want to lock in cell D4 by hitting the F4 key. And that places a dollar sign in front of the row and the column. We want to format that so we can round it off. Okay, that's not critical. Just makes it easier to work with. And perfectly fine. Our principal reduction is going to be the payment minus the interest. We can then determine our new balance by taking the prior balance and subtracting out the principal. Now that we have that all done, we can copy our payment to row and bring it all the way down to the end, 36, and paste. And we know we have completed the optimization table because at the end of 36 payments, the balance is zero. If we want to uh, keep track of the date of the payment in the date column, we would highlight the two dates that we entered in, 9-1, 9-10. We don't have to type out each of the others. We can simply highlight those two and double click our little box in the lower right-hand corner. And that will autofill the dates to the end of the next payment. In our next video, we're going to take 
this amortization table, and we're going to prepare the required journal entries.